Morning guys, it's Winter Field Day 2021 and I made a game day decision to bring the Jeep because of the inclement weather and snow we had here in the Sonoran Desert uh, this last week. Uh, but I'm going to limit myself to my original pack. Uh, but I did bring one little box of convenience items. I don't know if I'm going to break into them. But uh, if I do, I'm going to show you what I pull out of that. And it could be fun to see what I would bring as convenience items. So we're hitting the trail right now and uh, hope to be at my base camp in about an hour. So we've got about three and a half to, to four miles off road. All right. Hope you guys will stick with me. This is going to be a fun video. It's going to be long, but we're going to go through all of my lessons learned, all of my goals, what worked, what didn't work, when I'm freezing, when I'm hot, and uh, it's gonna be a fun time. Well guys, I finally made it to uh, base camp here. I'm planning on setting up my tent in this area. I have the Jeep over here. Uh, there was quite a bit of mud, um, but uh, yeah, we made it through other than having to get into four wheel drive low for about 30 seconds. It was pretty good. And uh, the plan is to attach the tarp shelter that you guys have seen on this channel from uh, two attachment points on the Jeep. And I'll be operating basically in this area here. Well, guys, there's the uh, tarp shelter, a little bit different configuration. So I want to see how the solar panels um, work out. I have done a video on this deployment before. Again, it's the same exact gear I carry with me, man portable, same set of stakes. Although for this configuration, I don't need the two stakes for the rear, uh, the trekking poles, and then I have the tarp. And I always run a couple of carabiners and paracord uh, on the Jeep roll cage. So very nice. This is what it looks like underneath. So this will be where I'm going to be operating of all goes well. Well, let's keep a running countdown. I broke into my first comfort item. Uh, this was an item I was not planning on putting in my pack. And uh, it is my uh, REI Flex Light chair. I was planning on sitting on my sleeping pad, which is fine. But you know what? Um, I don't think it's a huge deal, especially given I'm still operating out in the middle of nowhere. And uh, you know what? Might as well be comfortable and have a place to sit down for about 26, uh, 26 hours or so. All right, guys. Next up, I'm going to go ahead and deploy my uh, solar power options. I showed this before, but this three liter bag has my uh, Buddy Pole Power Mini that has my solar charge controller and a power distribution. There's also a 4.5 amp hour BioWino battery. And then I have the PowerFilm folding 20 watt panels. Uh, the deployment this time around is gonna be a little bit different. I have a different pitch on my tarp shelter. So I may have to in improvise something with some paracord to keep it tied down. But uh, right now, even before my station goes up, I wanna make sure that I'm able to start generating power so I can start to top off some of my five volt devices, including my uh, batteries for my GoPro. Well guys, we have another lesson learned. Uh, different deployment in the field. I went ahead and deployed the solar panels using the Jeep instead of my normal A-frame and I did not have enough cordage to be able to secure it to the top of the uh, the roll cage there on both sides. So fortunate for me, uh, since I have the Jeep and I have a couple of totes, I was able to pull out uh, about 50 feet of paracord I keep in there. So I'll be adding a bit more cordage on my list. Um, I had a bunch of pre-cut lengths for my various guy systems, but I think next time I'm gonna bring at least 20 feet of extra paracord. I do have a small paracord bracelet on my pack. So if I was actually out in the wild, I would have gone through that, but I just didn't feel like taking that apart, but uh, it would have worked as well. So it's really fun finding these lessons learned. Basically, I'm topping off my 4.5 amp hour BioWino battery and also topping off my phone. So right now I am actually not at a deficit whatsoever. Well guys, it's about 15 minutes until the contest starts for Winter Field Day 2021. I'm gonna start by operating and going through all of my two meter and 440 tests. I have erected here the Soda Beams Carbon 6 Carbon Fiber Mast 
It stands about uh, 19 feet 6 inches. I have the Slim Jim J-Pole from N9 TAX. Um, it's sitting down about two elements lower, uh, but as you can see, it is nicely secured all the way down to the bottom. I even have enough rocks here to make a nice fire pit for tonight. And uh, yeah, I have it connected right now to the Yesu FT60R. This is KT1 RUN. Can I get a radio check? I'm out in the Tonto National Forest uh, preparing for Winter Field Day 2021, and I just want to see if I can get into the repeater. So it looks like I'm able to get into the repeater. I had set out a number of goals uh, for the emergency communication plan for today. And while repeaters do not count towards the contest, which I really could care less about, I just want to see if I'm able to, um, in an emergency, get into the repeater where I'm located. Uh, I'm able to get into the repeater. I do get the acknowledgement beep, but uh, nobody responded. I'm going to try two meter uh, simplex. This is KT1 RUN in the Tonto National Forest, preparing for Winter Field Day 2021. Just trying to check to see if my two meter Slim Jim J-Pole is working. Uh, if anybody can come back to me, that would be great. Thanks. KTN RUN, this is KN6JHO Mobile, reading you uh, loud and clear. KN96, can you go with your call one more time? You're also coming in loud and clear. The call was Kilo November 6, Juliet Hotel Oscar. Uh, name is Will. Roger, Roger. Well, the name is Gaston. Thanks a lot. Like I said, I'm preparing for Winter Field Day 2021. I'm about four miles uh, on the south side of the uh, Tonto National Forest, and I have a 19-foot uh, mast deployed with a Slim Jim uh, J-Pole, and just want to make sure I'm all ready for the contest. So I do appreciate you getting back to me. No worries. Uh, like I said, picking up really loud. Uh, I'm just, uh, just north of Phoenix on uh, uh, Interstate 17. So, uh, uh, anyway, good luck, and I uh, hope you have fun out there today. All right, guys, I'm going to try uh, two meters. I'm going to use the local uh, soda frequency, and let's see if I can actually call for CQ contest. CQ, CQ, CQ contest for winter field day. This is Kilo Tango 1, Romeo, uniform, November, operating 1, Oscar, Alpha, Zulu. I guess nobody's playing. All right, guys, so the next thing I want to do is test out APRS. I uh, will continue to use my 2 meter uh, HT, but uh, my primary method for getting out there is I have the MobiLink TNC2. Uh, this will be connected to my Yesu FT60R, and I have the cable for that. And then I also have my Android phone running APRS Droid. So I'm going to get all of this booted up, uh, get the audio levels working correctly, and then I'm going to try sending a text message to my wife and see if she responds. I'll also try an email as well. Well, guys, that's a good sound I can actually receive. Let's see if I can actually get out with 5 watts. All right, guys, so I'm all connected here. Let me show you what I'm working with. So I have my radio set on the APRS uh, nationwide frequency. I have the MobiLink DTNC connected, and I have paired it with the APRS Droid app. It's not coming through here, but I am seeing stations come through, so this is good. Well, guys, this is pretty good news. Um, I received confirmation on the APRS Droid app that another station digipeated for me my text message to my wife. Now, the real question is whether the instructions I'd left for her to reply back to me She'll actually be able to do that. I have faith in her, but I also don't have a whole lot of faith that she's going to, uh, that she didn't tune me out. So we'll see, but at least I know that she has received a, a text message based on the um, acknowledgement I got from the uh, station that digipeated my uh, packet on my behalf. So another success for Winter Field Day 2021. Again, uh, what I'm doing right now isn't part of the contest rules, but again, I don't care. Um, I just want to make sure I can test uh, my ability to have targeted communication with known quantities, and that includes people like my wife. Well, guys, let's uh, do a quick recap on the APRS experiments. Uh, I was able to send a text message to my wife, but I have not received a response. I'll put a message down below if I do. 
I was able to get a confirmation that I was able to send a text message to my boss. Um, I tried sending an email, but uh, for some reason that is not going through. But what was helpful was my APRS cheat sheet here. Um, I've got a bunch of different cheat sheets. I forgot the format for sending messages to email too. If you guys wanna see a video on all the different types of cheat sheets I have, let me know in the comments down below. All right guys, here's a interesting experiment. Um, this is the Yaesu FT818ND. It's my all band, all mode radio. But for the first time, I'm actually trying the rubber duck antenna that it came with on the front connector here and trying it on an FM broadcast station. So just the normal over the air FM and check this out. So, so I, oof, that's it, you know, I mean, at least it, it, when the house goes down, we all. And I know this may not look like a really um, interesting exercise but it gives me options. If I don't have an FM or AM radio, uh, I can actually use my ham radio gear in a pinch to get local uh, information or listen to music if I get bored today. So I just wanted to share this one with you. Uh, again, it's not a winter field day points or whatever, but uh, just something else I had on my punch list to do. All right, um, on to a few other experiments. Uh, you notice that I did that recent check here with the FM broadcast. Right now I'm connected to power and it's actually kind of nice because I'm drawing about uh, 500 milliamps on receive and uh, I'm actually drawing uh, about one amp of solar. So I am operating at uh, basically a, a break even point. Um, I'm not even depleting yet my uh, 4.5 amp hour BioWino battery. It is pretty much in float even with the amount of uh, current I'm drawing from the radio in receive. Uh, I think next up I'm going to go ahead and try my luck at uh, Winlink email. Well guys, we have yet another experiment. Uh, this is my mobile packet station. It consists of the Yaesu FT60R handheld. I have connected to it the MobiLink D TNC2. Then I have the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus and I have Pat Winlink installed. Right now I'm running it off of a small uh, cell phone battery charger. Uh, this is actually kind of nice because it does uh, allow for enough amps to be drawn. And then while it's not necessary, uh, I went ahead and brought my small iPad 2 and uh, just recently purchased a Bluetooth keyboard. So uh, this allows me to VNC into the Raspberry Pi if needed. Uh, I also can SSH directly, have a nice SSH client, and I can also connect to uh, the um, uh, the web uh, interface for Pat. I've set this up so that I technically don't need this setup. I can actually just run it headless and connect to it with my iPhone and have the iPhone basically connect to the Wi-Fi directly on the Pi and then open a Safari browser and access Pat Winlink. So uh, unfortunately right now I'm not able to get into any of the uh, stations. Well guys, I brought one luxury item. Actually, I brought a handful of luxury items but it was a singular piece of firewood from the house. And uh, I'm gonna take my mooring off and uh, go ahead and process some wood, do some batoning, and then hopefully tonight I can get a small fire going. Found this guy lying around. All right, just like that, we're gonna process a bunch of these pieces, get some smaller ones for tinder, and uh, yeah, hopefully we'll get a fire going uh, later tonight. And uh, what I like about the uh, more knives is that they're really inexpensive. This one's the Light My Fire. It has a um, small ferro rod in the back that I'll use to start it, but typically you can pick these things up for less than 20 bucks. And the steel is actually pretty good. I've been batoning this one with wood about this size for the last year and a half or so, and it's the same knife. Well, we have a nice little pile there. And uh, believe it or not, that all came from that one piece of wood. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna work some smaller pieces here just to get the, uh, the fire going.
And uh, like I said, guys, I love this knife. This is just unbelievable for for the money. And it's the kind of thing where if you have like a three or four hundred dollar fixed blade knife, it's not the kind of thing that you want to to kind of destroy and be real hard on your blade. Um, although they're designed to do that, but uh, my preference is I like these twenty dollar uh, more more knock knives. This is KT1 RUN. Well, guys, uh, that was a little bit difficult to understand. Uh, we were able to make a contact on the local 70 centimeter uh, repeater. That was another item I had on my checklist. And uh, another test that I wanted to do, which looks successful, is connect the 817 to the uh, J-Pole antenna, and uh, it all looks good. So again, while that doesn't count for winter field day uh, points, uh, it's MCOM, MCOM, MCOM for me. So if I needed to signal anybody for help here, at least I would have been able to uh, get another local that understands and knows this area. All right, guys, so I decided to uh, go ahead and deploy my HF station anyhow on 20 meters. Here is the um, carbon six carbon fiber mast relocated. And uh, I decided not to uh, guide out today so you can see the guy ring is just kind of hanging out in its own. I just have the, um, the stake at the bottom to uh, give the pole some stability and then a couple of rocks uh, to help with uh, the tension that is at the end of the line. And I've got the Pactena mini and fed half wave. Uh, deployed. It's cut for 20 meters. And you can actually see there's quite a bit of chatter going on. November Charlie. Thank you for one hotel November Charlie. Please copy one hotel November Tango X-ray QSL. One hotel your sector? Yes, one hotel North Texas, 73. North Texas, thank you. Have a good day. Have a good day. KT1, are you on? Uh, sugar, sugar, Yankee. Try it again. Calling CQ for winter field day. KT1, are you in? I've got November Hotel. Papa, Mike, 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 Papa, Papa, Mike, Papa, Mike, Papa, these home stations are driving me crazy. Copy, one hotel. Sierra Tango X-ray, 7-3, thanks for the contact. Oscar. Kilo Tango 1, Romeo Uniform, November. Copy, Kilo November 4, India Uniform, Victor. Please copy, one hotel, India Alpha. QSL, please copy, one hotel, November Charlie. Oh, there's a surprise, copy another hotel, hotel station. Excuse me, one hotel, November Charlie. All right, guys, so uh, I've been kind of sitting on a handful of frequencies and trying to chase a contact, and I'm just getting stomped on with my five watts. They can hear everybody just fine. And a little bit of a tirade here. I know I'm a new ham, and um, my big problem with contesting weekends is that you can't be heard when you're running QRP, or at least I'm missing a technique to do that. Uh, that's why I prefer summits on the air. Um, it's an easy way for me to make contact on very low power, but uh, almost all the stations I'm at least hearing in my area are operating from home. So, you know, one hotel and then whatever their uh, uh, location is. And it's just driving me crazy. And this is supposed to be fun. So I think I'm going to give it another 30 minutes. Um, I can't even find an open frequency to call CQ on. But uh, yeah, it would be nice if there was an event outside of Soda that required that you operated portable with some reasonable limits, like no more than 100 watts. Uh, ideally, QRP levels, like anywhere from 20, 10 watts, 5 watts would be ideal. But uh, anyways, just a rant. Um, I'm out here, nothing else to do. Just waiting for the sun to come down so that I can, uh, you know, set up my tent and uh, start a fire and have some dinner and enjoy some coffee. Here's another little experiment I want to show you since I didn't have much luck with HF. I have my Yesu FT60R, my HT, and I have it sitting in the cradle. 
and I made a small cable at home so that I can actually charge it from the um, Buddy Pole Power Mini through the battery pack that's connected. And then everything is topped off with solar. So very cool little experiment. Um, I'm looking at the meter right now. It doesn't come out on camera very well, but uh, it's indicating float, which means I basically have a full 4.5 amp hour charge on this battery. And I'm still producing enough uh, solar even at 5 p.m. Uh, local time. And actually I'm pulling about uh, 500 milliamps, which is kind of cool. And uh, yeah, this is a great uh, option for anybody looking to figure out how to recharge their devices out in the field. All right, guys, we have our tent deployed with the uh, rain fly on for the night. I had to uh, relocate the, uh, the fire pit. And then uh, this is the current configuration of the station. Uh, tonight, I'm going to take down the solar panels and the tarp shelter just so that it did, doesn't get tossed around in the wind. But uh, everything is actually uh, going pretty well today, except for the HF contact. Uh, lots of lessons learned. I think I may start to do maybe some blog articles. Um, there are a lot of little things that I'm learning. I'm trying to take uh, copious notes and not forget to tell you about them. But um, I think I have a new setup for my comms gear. And to be honest with you guys, I'm actually preferring VHF, UHF, both for weight and in terms of what I'm able to do in the area that I'm in. But uh, more on that later. Uh, I think I'm just going to kick back for a little bit, make a cup of coffee, and uh, read. Hey, evening guys. I hope everybody's staying warm on winter field day. I'm actually starting to uh, wind down a bit. And... Uh, Made myself finally some coffee. And then dinner's not real impressive. It's like I'm a college student again. It's just a little bit of top ramen. And uh, yeah, I've got the uh, the tent set up. I have my fire pit relocated. And um, I think all I'm gonna do is make a little dinner. And uh, I've had my phone on airplane mode pretty much the entire day, actually, since I left the house. And uh, the only thing I'm doing now is listening to uh, ham radio workbench and I'm listening to episode 119 portable ops and uh, Really looking forward to listen to that just relaxing and then we'll move on to having more coffee a fire and uh, Catching the Arizona sunset All right now it's time to make a little fire all I have is the uh, Worn off knife and again, this is the light my fire that has the small ferro rod. Um, I have a larger one but uh, I thought I would go ahead and give this one a try. And then I have a small fire kit here. And um, there's some waterproof matches or stormproof matches, which I won't be using. And then I have some uh, cotton balls in Vaseline. And then a few small pieces of, of tinder. So we'll see if we can get this going. And uh, the cotton balls are fantastic tinder, guys. And all you need is a little bit of uh, Vaseline and put them in a Ziploc baggie and just mush them around. And the best thing to do with this one, and I've done a video on this really early on in the channel, is just go ahead and separate it as best you can so you have like these really fluffy fibers. And uh, it drives me crazy because there are companies that will sell you Tinder like this and you can make gobs of this stuff for you know, pennies on the dollar. So we'll take our small ferro rod here. And uh, you do need a knife that has a 90 degree spine. The uh, more, knives, the more knives are actually very good for it. You could actually see it, sh it shoots a good spark. The trick here is to leave the ferro rod there and pull back. There we go. Sorry about that guys, I had to tend to the fire. That's what I get for talking too much. Uh, like I was saying, the uh, 4.5 amp hour Bioino battery 
uh, was able to be fully topped off. I was able to charge my uh, HT. I brought the cradle, a little bit of weight there, but um, it's a great system. I basically have infinite power out here in the Sonoran Desert. Did a couple of experiments uh, with APRS. I need to go home to make sure that uh, they went through, but I did receive a confirmation that two of my text messages went through. Uh, one was to the wife and one was to uh, my boss at work. Uh, I tried to send an email using uh, email to the gateway via APRS and that failed. Uh, so I gave up, I'll try that again tomorrow. And then I also tried uh, WinLink on two meter packet uh, with Pat WinLink and uh, was not successful. The uh, nearest station I believe is somewhere in the 30 kilometer range for me. So tomorrow morning I'm gonna go ahead and just do a VHF UHF uh, light pack hit the hill and see if that helps. So in general, good first day. I'm happy that the fire is going. Um, I feel good, nice and warm. The tent went up great. The tarp shelter was fantastic. Um, had a lot of fun on uh, two meters today. I was able to make uh, some contacts in the local repeater, some simplex contacts. So again, I'm not playing for points, but uh, I think in terms of an MCOM exercise, I couldn't be happier with my progress. All right, guys, I'll catch you in the morning. I want to relax with the fire, make another cup of coffee, and uh, probably do a bit of reading with the uh, the headlamp. Going versus having this box. And, and Mike, it's funny when you were talking about the, the big display for the G90. The PX3 for the KX3 requires three cables. I need power, I gotta get IQ into it, and then a control cable. And the IQ cable, yeah. like, you, it has, like, you can't be further than X from the radio because of RFI issues. And, it's a similar experience. Morning guys, it's uh, Sunday morning now. Uh, we've still got a little bit of time for uh, winter field day. Got about four more hours left. And uh, last night I had a really brutal night. Um, we had experienced some pretty bad weather earlier in the week. Uh, we had some rain, uh, some hail, and then actually snow, which is not typical here in the Sonoran Desert. And I tested my tent and my sleeping system, which is a 30 degree quilt. And for those of you who don't know, uh, quilts are essentially um, similar to sleeping bags, but they're not fully enclosed. It's basically like a quilt. Uh, there are uh, cinch straps at the bottom of mine and a couple of clasps so I can make a toe box. And uh, basically the way it works is you're supposed to have an insulating uh, layer like your sleeping pad on the bottom and then have both sides drape over you and then you stick your feet into uh, the toe box with the snaps on the bottom. And uh, last night it was in the, the mid 30s and I was freezing in the tent. So I broke into the Jeep and uh, I always carry with me a military surplus wool blanket. My wife does that well, does as well. And uh, that helped a little bit. And uh, it got to the point where it got too cold, so I tried jumping in the Jeep, rearranged things. But uh, I have a two-door JK, and uh, even though I'm only five foot seven, uh, I was in a fetal position. So after about an hour of that, I went back into the tent. Uh, it was more comfortable. I was actually appreciating uh, being lat flat on my back again. But uh, yeah, the whole night was freezing. Uh, I was trying to order a uh, 20 degree or lower mummy bag and there was just no way for it to arrive in time. So that's on my list. So that's another lesson learned is that um, I typically don't hike or camp in the winter. It's usually spring and summer and my gear is very much geared around uh, those seasons. Um, outside of that, it was a really good uh, winter field day. I didn't make any HF contacts. I think I went on a few tirades around QRP and people operating from home with higher power. Um, so that kind of bugged me a bit, but you know, it is what it is. I think I'm going to stick, stick to Soto where I'm able to work, be the station that's worked and, uh, just keep on working QRP levels. But outside of that, I, I think other than it being cold and that HF fail and the windling failure, okay, there were quite a few fails, but uh, that's why we come out here and, and train. Uh, but the important thing for me was I was able to do targeted communication to the people I wanted to, and that was with my wife. And I set her up with APRS.FI with a link for my call, and uh, she was pretty much able to track my whole location on this, this outing. Uh, I know I'm probably missing a bunch of stuff, guys, uh, 
but uh, yeah, get out there. Uh, operating in the field, um, especially with the elements, is no piece of cake. Uh, big kudos to you, uh, Julian Oscar Hotel 8 Sierra Tango November uh, with Survival Tech Nord. Uh, check out his channel. He operates in, you know, in the snow all the time, so I don't know how he does it. Uh, I know he has much better gear than I do, but... Um, yeah, get out there, train, uh, practice your MCOM under uh, less than ideal circumstances. And that's it, guys. I want to enjoy some breakfast here, uh, pack up, and then head back home. Be strong, be safe, and be prepared.